Eric Scheidler here live on Facebook from downtown Chicago <laughs> where the Pro-Life Action League is holding day three of our Face the Truth tour where we are showing the reality of abortion, the victims of abortion in the public square. We had planned to be at this site months ago and just today we learned, actually through the Drudge Report, that this uh, counter-protesting group uh, was going to be showing up. It's uh, Refuse Fascism or something like that. Um, they are protesting all around the country uh, with uh, Donald Trump about to announce his Supreme Court nominee. And uh, we found out that their protest in Chicago is going to be a counter protest of us. So we were glad to see that because uh, it always uh, gets more interest from the public. We're able to get out more literature, we're able to do more stuff. So uh, really excited to be out here. I'm sort of on the island here on Wacker Drive right now. I wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction to what's going on here. We've been walking around and showing you some of the signs that we have on display here in Chicago and some of the uh, signs the other guys have out. They uh, seem to be kind of uh, anti-fascist, or, uh, or they think they are. I don't think they actually have the first clue what fascism actually is. Um, they just like to use that word. I think fascism just means uh, fascist is somebody I don't like. Yeah. Well, there's, you heard it, you heard it live. You know, we do get that that comment sometimes that uh, people who've had uh, late-term miscarriage, you might call it stillbirth. Uh, it's, it's very hard to see these pictures. I know that. My wife and I had a, a miscarriage several years ago, and um, several of the women out here holding these signs have, have been through that experience as well. And it, it uh, you know, for me, it, it, it didn't weaken my resolve to show these signs because uh, the, the sorrow that comes from a wanted child being lost is, um, I think, only heightened when you, when you consider the fact that people are choosing to kill these children. If I weren't shooting this video, I would have tried to stop to talk to that lady a little bit about that, because I've had a lot of success with that. Let me turn around here and show you. Whatever you feel about that. We got this guy. We need to drive out this Trump pacifist It's a, a dude who's uh, talking about ovaries and stuff. They are... Uh, talking about how Pence and Trump belong in prison and they want to smash the system. I don't think they understand quite how it works here. We have elections in the United States of America. And, uh, you know, what's interesting is that a lot of, the, a lot of people voted for President Trump be precisely because of the issue we're talking about across the country this evening, the Supreme Court. That was a decisive issue for many people um, on, uh, on election day. You know, people weren't happy with uh, having to vote for Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. Uh, you know, many, many people were happy to, but some, for some, Trump, was a difficult Trump, choice. Trump, 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 and, uh, Trump, 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 But for, uh, for many, it was the Supreme Court that swung him. I said, you know, regardless of what else, other concerns we may have, um, this guy looks like he's going to appoint good people to the Supreme Court. So you can hear him. He's on his microphone again, his, bull, his bullhorn. Right. Yeah. Yep. It's a guy. It's a guy yelling, uh, yelling at us about what, what it takes for women to be free. I know, how weak does he think women are? They need him to talk for them. Uh, ironically enough, a good 50% plus of our group are female. I'll uh, give you just one example. This is... Uh, our staff member Cece Weiser is holding the sign here, live on Facebook. So Cece, aren't you glad this guy from uh, the anarchist group is here to speak on your behalf as a woman? Oh yeah, it's great. It's a shame that you as a woman aren't able to speak for yourself yeah. and have your own opinion about abortion. You have to say what, think what he thinks you should think about this. Yeah, this man's telling me all about <laughs> women's rights. It's great. Yeah. Isn't that funny? You can't make this stuff up, folks. I want to walk down the road here and show you a couple more of our signs. And look at these crowds. Look at the people here. What a massive, massive opportunity it is to be out on the streets on a day like today with uh, so many folks out on the street heading to the commuter centers. I'll turn around here and you can see the, the heads bobbing up and down and all the folks. Here's, a, here's one of our signs. It's particularly poignant. The display here on, on um, Madison Street, downtown Chicago, uh, ends with these last two signs about the beauty of life in the womb. 
Unfortunately, Facebook likes to put everything in reverse. Mirror image. That says, life is beautiful at 16 weeks. And isn't it? Look at that beautiful baby face. 16 weeks, you know? Abortion is legal at 16 weeks all over the United States. And it happens tens, uh, ten, over 10,000 times uh, a year, very, even later than 16 weeks all over the country. Hope I'm not giving you a vertigo here or anything with my spinning around. We got one more sign here at the end of this display. This sign says life is beautiful at seven weeks. Tiny, tiny little embryo at seven weeks in utero. What a beautiful little face. And sure, you know, this baby's kind of funny looking. Oh, a lot of us are funny looking anyway. But, you know, kind of an alien creature. And uh, I'd like to think that we can, that we can, uh, you know, build up, uh, uh, kind of extend our, our, our human family to cover these children who are so very, very young. Let's not be excluding people from the human family. Let's be in including everybody that we can. You know, we're all very aware today of, of you know, racial tension, and we're seeking to, uh, to find a way to, uh, to restore some, uh, some peace on that, on that particular issue. By the way, that was Teresa Jansen, uh, one of our staff members holding that sign. She's the daughter of, of League staff member John Jansen. In fact, there's your dad right now, passing out some waters. Way to go, John. We like to keep everybody hydrated out here. All right, so where was I? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big uh, soccer fan. I've been watching the World Cup. And before every game, the, the teams, the two teams gather behind a banner putting an end to racism, you know? Yeah. So, you know, even in international football, there's this attempt to, to expand our, our, our human family, to to restore um, the original harmony that we're supposed to have amongst each other. And that's what we're trying to do on this issue. We want to include these unborn children. The fetal stage of life, at the amniotic stage of life, at every stage of life. Including them in, you know. We've got Christian fascists out here running propaganda. There they are. The children, well, the little babies are human beings. What a distortion. No, a fetus is not a child. I'm just a fetus you're is gonna not a human being. It's subordinate to its mother. Its existence is dependent on the mother bringing the pregnancy to term. And that's a woman's choice, whether a woman wants to carry that out. But you're says. trying to give that choice to the state. You're trying to give that choice to the government. You're trying to reduce women to the status of incubators. Well, I don't suppose you can hear me if he's shouting, but... That sign, if you can't read it in mirror image, the system cannot be reformed. It must be overthrown. Well, you know, we have an august history of uh, rebellion here in the United States. Um, that's, uh, you know, we just celebrated the 4th of July, Independence Day. I don't know that they're trying to tap into that kind of a theme exactly. I don't know quite what they mean by overthrown. But there's a difference between uh, the government of 1776 in the colonies and the government of 2018 here in the United States of America, which is that the government today really is elected by the people. Now, I know it's not perfect. I know there's a lot of, of need for reform. And, uh, you know, honestly, a lot of that reform would come by, by way of people just being engaged, actually caring about the issues of the day, you know, reading the news, reading alternative news sources, reading all the sources and, and figuring out what's right, voting on election day, talking to their friends and neighbors. You know, we have democracy here. We have the tools right at our fingertips as long as we, you know, choose to use them. So uh, not exactly the same scene uh, as back in 1776. But we don't know exactly what they mean by uh, overthrown. Uh, I, I suspect it would be very ugly if, if they were to get their way, though. I'm going to step into the shade here a minute because I know it's very bright. I want to show you another one of our signs. This sign is of a baby aborted at 15 weeks. It says, remember this face, aborted 15 weeks. And it's really not a very gory sign, is it? I mean, you can see a little, 
pool of blood behind him, but mostly just focuses on this beautiful little face and this tiny, tiny, little, perfect little, perfect little hand on this poor little boy. Um, you know, I, I spent a lot of time working on these new signs last year before we introduced them, um, replacing our older signs. And I gotta tell you, spending hours in front of the computer on Photoshop preparing this display of signs, you really begin to feel a bond with the children in the pictures, especially the aborted ones, thinking about who they would have been, you know, how sad it is that their lives ended so soon. 15 weeks of life. You know, on the other side of that sign, there's a different caption. Let's see if I can show it to you. Let's see it back there. And that reads, his only baby picture. Just think about that. Think about that. We all love baby pictures. You know, I remember the first time I saw baby pictures of my wife when I visited her, her home, and they took out the photo album. Back when people had photo albums, that's how old I am. And it was uh, tremendously uh, cool to see what she looked like when she was a cute little baby and a little girl. But then think about all these 60 million in America and, and hundreds of millions around the, the world that never got to have any baby pictures at all. And this guy's only baby picture is an abortion picture. Here's another one of those poignant signs that we prepared. See that little foot? It's red not because it's bloody, but because that's the color of a baby foot at eight weeks, aborted at eight weeks. The caption reads, she'll never learn to walk. Again, we're trying to tap into these common human experiences of, of you know, how we as, as adults, as, as older, as teens, as older kids, how we uh, interact and connect with, uh, with, with, with babies, right? The first steps, I'll never forget my, my, my now 26 year old son's first steps, about 11 months. They were in a hotel where we happened to be staying, waiting for an apartment to be ready for us to move into. And, um, you know, we all, we all delight at those first steps. And now in the age of everyone having a video camera in their pocket, everybody takes pictures of that first step. They try to anyway if they can catch it. But that little baby, that little human being, that brother or sister, they'll never learn to walk. Because they were aborted before they were even born. Here's another, another one of our signs. Again, plugging into that experience of protection that we feel and delight that we feel in uh, children at the very first stages of life. 10 perfect fingers aborted 11 weeks. Those fingers are, are, the skin is translucent, you can see the bones through it. And that's the, the way that life is at 11 weeks in the womb. The child is still very, very skinny. It's much later in pregnancy that the child begins to put on fat and begins to have um, skin tone and color. You know, all babies at very early stage of pregnancy um, are, the, are the same sort of translucent color. There's no uh, racial difference to be seen between children uh, at this early stage. Kind of plugs back into um, my comments a little while ago about you know the laudable effort at the World Cup to, to combat racism. You know, the, there, there is no race in the womb. How about that? At least not early on. There's no race in the womb. Every little unborn child is kind of looks uh, skin-wise very similar to every other one. So our display carries on down, way on down Madison Street here. We're on both sides of the street. There's a new bus depot thing here, so you can't see the other side of the street like you once could. There's a whole bunch of signs over in the other street as well, on the other side of the street. I'm gonna walk on back up. And uh, see if we can't hear what our, what our friends are, are ranting about. So I think I told you, but I'll, I'll say it again for those who have joined us, that um, we found out this afternoon through the Drudge Report, actually, and uh, Daily Caller article linked to on Drudge Report, that this uh, group, Refuse Fascism, was going to be coming out all over the country holding these rallies tonight. Give me a second. going by so this group's going to be coming out all over the country to oppose uh, President Trump's Supreme Court nominee whoever that may be and um, one of their sites obviously is here in Chicago we found out through the Drudge Report that the 
Protest in Chicago was going to start out counter-protesting our uh, Face the Truth tour here at uh, Madison Street and Wacker Drive. And then they're, they're heading to somewhere else a little bit later on. I think they're going to be out here when the announcement is actually made uh, here and, and all over the place. So um, it's exciting to, to find that out, that they were going to be out here. That always increases our visibility. It always makes things a little more interesting. It motivates the volunteers. I mean, when you come out here and there's somebody counter-protesting you, um, that's a, a real sign to you that what you're doing is worthwhile. You know, if the other side is willing to come out and try to, to counter the message that you're offering. What's interesting, though, with the particular display that we have here, the particular message that we have here today, it really doesn't have a political message. Facebook thinks otherwise, and uh, we've actually been trying to, to uh, boost some of our, our videos and photos from our Face the Truth tour, and they all get held up as political ads, so that's kind of a pain, but that's how they see it. Our message here isn't political today. It's not religious at least not in an obvious way. It's not, we're not even talking about the morality of abortion. You know, we're willing to, and if people stop to chat with us, we definitely go there. But the display itself, the literature and the science that we have out here right now, they focus solely on the humanity of the unborn child, showing the reality of abortion and evoking sympathy for unborn children, especially those who are the victims of abortion. That's really our mission out here today. So these guys are, bringing this radical political message to a demonstration that is really not, at least not in any explicit way, at all political. We're really just here trying to evoke sympathy. This is more of a, a, a public outreach, um, an awareness raising, than it is any kind of a, a political activity. So we're hearing about the installation of fascism in this country. And it, you know, I gotta say, I'm gonna step away a little bit because I want to rant about about this whole fascism thing a little bit because I think it's, it's it's ugly as hell. Pardon me, but it's ugly as heck that they're talking about fascism in this way. You know, I'm a student of history. I love to read history, and I've read a great deal about um, the Nazi Third Reich in Germany during the 1920s, 30s, 40s. I've read biographies of Hitler. Um, I have read, uh, you know, the biography of Stalin. Not exactly a fascist, but certainly a hor horrific dictator. To compare the situation in fascist Germany to America, I don't even know what to call it. It's unhinged, it's wrong, it's almost insane. If this were really a fascist country, the cops would be coming and beating these guys down into the pavement. They'd be dragging them off to jail, knocking out their teeth breaking into their homes and dragging their wives and children and friends out into jail, all right? That's what fascism is. Fascism is real brutality. It's the violent subjugation of counter-opinions. It's the infiltration of every strata of society by the state. I mean, Hitler's Germany, they infiltrated, obviously, the government at every level, the local governments, the state governments. They infiltrated the churches. They infiltrated children's choirs and camps. They infiltrated every strata of society. Every strata of society had to have its, its Nazi emblem, its Nazi propagandist plugged into the regime in some way or another. They wouldn't, Hitler never faced anything like this. The German regime never faced anything like this. Counter protesters coming out, complaining about the government. The very fact that they're here Talking about fascism wrongly, inaccurately, foolishly is rock solid proof. This is not a fascist country, and we're not getting anywhere near fascism. Fascism would fascists wouldn't put up with this kind of crap. We, on the other hand, are freedom-loving Americans. We are civil, respectful. You have to go and vote. In all that you we do. You have to go and be with us. And, uh, and so, you know, we welcome the counter protests. We're glad to see them. We tried to get some of their literature. They wouldn't give it to us because we're fascists. But we offered them ours. Now, on, the, uh, on the microphone now, you see uh, someone from the NARAL group here in Illinois, Benita. She's, uh, she's actually friendly. We, we say hi to each other. I think she knows I'm not a fascist. It's up to us to drive them out. 
right. to danger. There are fascists so, in the White House. It's up That's to my us rant about fascism. To drive them out. Fuck you, man. Fuck your election. That, does, that shit should people... Just because Hitler won the election, people should have respected it. Is that he doesn't know his history. consequences. He doesn't know his history. <laughs> because Hitler won the election, people well, should What's amazing, you have to... Him. I have to rely on precedent. Well, Plessy versus Ferguson was precedent. I know, exactly. And I'll tell you what, Heller is the Second Amendment case, Heller. That's precedent. You think they're going to be whining about precedent if they try to overrule Heller? No. No, not at all. They're liars. Right on. All right. So, a little friendly chat there across the street. I hope you could hear that. That guy was screamed at and sworn at by our, our friends from the other side. All right. So that's what we're doing here today. See a few more of our counter protester friends. They like to put the coat hangers on their signs. I have a theory that there were no coat hanger abortions until the other side started talking about it. Um, but, you know, nobody really knows. There's not a lot of documentation about that. Well, thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Please uh, share the link to this video with your, uh, with your friends. Hiya. Hi. And um, we'll be tuning in. I'll ask you to tune in again uh, later on this week. We'll be out in uh, other parts of the Chicago area in the coming days and uh, showing the truth about abortion all over uh, Chicago land. If you'd like to get involved with something like this or get copies of these signs in your own community, go to prolifeaction.org and get in touch. Um, also, if. Um, You'd like to support what we're doing here. You can go to prolifeaction.org and make a donation. Give us a gift. You know, three bucks will help us to get water. Three bucks is what we pay for a case of water. Uh, Ninety bucks to fill the uh, cargo van over here. You can see it back there with the. Maybe you can see it. Tail lights flashing. Ninety bucks to put gas in there. We go through an awful lot of gas, to, uh, gallons of gas on a tour like that. Tour like this. Um, literature. We're passing out thousands of pieces of literature. Gift of 10 bucks will allow us to pass out 100 pieces of literature. So those are some of the ways you can help us. Go to prolifeaction.org and click the donate button. Uh, we're grateful for any support you can offer to us. Of course, we welcome your prayers um, for us all during this coming week as we're going to be out on the out on the public square. You know, generally these events are very safe. We've occasionally had people react violently. At this very corner, several years ago, we had a drunk fella come along and... Um, throw a bunch of our signs into the street and tackle one of our staff members who's all bloodied up. And the cops, you know, kind of didn't really do anything about it. It was quite frustrating. In fact, one of the sergeants that day said, oh, she didn't smell any alcohol. The guy reeked. And she claimed that uh, he wasn't drunk. She couldn't tell. So um, that kind of thing does happen. It's, it's not the norm. You know, I don't want anybody to feel intimidated to come out with us. But, you know, I think a lot of the reason why that kind of violence doesn't happen very often, and it's quite rare, is because we have people like you praying for us. So please keep those prayers coming. If you wanna see the schedule so you can pray very pointedly, go to prolifeaction.org and look at our current events, upcoming events, look at the Face of Truth Tour schedule, and you can see where we're gonna be, and you can pray for us during those hours. Be very grateful for that. And again, for any financial support you can offer for this campaign. So I'm gonna say goodbye now and get back to uh, talking to the volunteers and see what I can do to engage with the public, passing out flyers and organizing this event. Again, I thank you for your uh, coming out to watch this video. Please do share uh, this video link and the work of the Pipe Action League with your friends. Thanks for watching. God bless you. And God bless America.